Have you ever wondered why Xs at the end of a letter signifies kisses? Since Valentine's Day was this week and a few Xs may have been placed on cards, we did a little digging to find out about them. Now, in the Middle Ages, many people were unable to read or write, and documents were often signed using an X. Kissing the X represented an oath to fulfill obligations specified in the document. The X and the kiss eventually became synonymous. Welcome to Prime Group Kaleidoscope with me, Savitri Rodrigo. This week brings a message of hope, empowers women entrepreneurs, makes school supplies have longer life, plus a whole lot more in our dose of positive, daring, different. Hold your breath in for a moment. Find your calm. This is the Green Embassy Homagama. Invest just 3 million rupees to reserve 0710 Prime Lands Residencies, PLC. Welcome to our quick look at the week that was on Snapshot. Sri Lanka's trade deficit widened to 8 billion US dollars in 2021 from 6 billion in 2020. While Sri Lanka's exports grew by $2.5 billion in 2021, imports soared 28.5% to $20.6 billion, US dollars, the highest in three years. Sri Lanka is the only country to record negative growth in remittances in the whole of South Asia, falling 22.7% to $5.49 billion. US dollars. The three most powerful countries in the world are the United States, which has the world's largest economy and the biggest military budget, China coming in second and Russia third. For those of you who remember the Bowers building in Fort, that 80-year-old Swiss elevator has been laid to rest and a spanking new one has replaced it. This is the oldest known porta potty. A 1,500-year-old portable toilet has been found at a Roman archaeological site. Now, if you like your French fries, then you can now smell like them too. The Idaho Potato Commission has put out a limited edition French fries scented perfume. A 555-carat black diamond believed to have come from space is going on sale at 6.8 million US dollars. Well, that's some spare change, isn't it? Welcome to Prime Group Kaleidoscope's News Capsule. Even though the Colombo stock market gained some marginal positive sentiment, it lost some of that momentum during the week. When the market closed on Thursday, the All Share Price Index continued its downward trend and fell by 1.16%, with the average daily turnover at 3.07 billion rupees. After hitting a record high of 95 US dollars per barrel this week, WTI oil has now stabilized at around 92.35 US dollars per barrel. Meanwhile, the price of gold was at an eight-month high of 1,875 US dollars per ounce as the US dollar and US Treasury yields dipped. Sri Lanka's GDP could grow 69% by 2025. That's music to my ears. But how? By simply increasing female participation in economic growth. Only 14% of SMEs are female-led, but what we don't realize is that by promoting female entrepreneurship, the resulting growth will not just spur our GDP, but also have cascading social benefits from improving child health, rural unemployment, education, and lowering gender-based violence. Director Consulting International Development, Diversity and Inclusion Leader of PwC Sri Lanka, Zahara Kada, explains how PwC is enhancing female capacity by strengthening the micro and SME sectors to improve female economic participation and inclusive growth. Lack of financial literacy and access to finance are some of the major barriers that women entrepreneurs still continue to face. PwC, in partnership with donors, government and the private sector has been supporting women entrepreneurship development over the last several years. 
we have trained over 1000 micro small medium scale entrepreneurs through one of the key donor funded projects where participants learn to develop a business plan for their own expansion idea and to adapt better business practices the training encourages participants to look at their business holistically which actually many of them had not done before and help develop a clear vision for the future and carry out their businesses in a more systematic manner armed with skills in business plan preparation and financial record keeping the participants should be also better equipped to address challenges of access to finance in the future when it comes to building a team of high achievers selinco life has proven capabilities the company showcased outstanding performance by winning five awards at the national sales congress recognizing sales excellence and another top 5 awards at the Slim Brand Excellence Awards including the best service brand of the year and best new entrant brand of the year This story proves that elephants never forget Derek who looked after a herd of elephants returned to Cambodia after 14 months and this is how the herd greeted him What a heartwarming reunion If you're thirsty some blue beer might do the trick A French brewery is using algae, a naturally occurring pigment, to create blue beer. Hold your breath in for a moment. Find your calm. This is the Green Embassy Homagama. Invest just three million rupees to reserve zero seven one zero triple seven triple three Prime Lands Residencies PLC. Before we bring on a message of hope with Dr. Lanka Desanayake, if you like to add four extra days or two extra weekends to your life. Speed read with Sanjeev Jayaratnam, and we are gifting 12 free speed reading programs on Kaleidoscope. It's on Zoom, so you can join in from anywhere in the world. Simply send us a message on any of our platforms: YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn, and you will be reading soon in double quick time. Making all your new goals in life a reality is why our strength is your strength. With 12 billion rupees worth of customer benefits in 2020 and a life insurance fund worth over 100 billion rupees, our strength is your strength. You focus on your goals, we will take care of the rest. Selinco Life. About 23,500 new cases of cancer are diagnosed each year in Sri Lanka, of which 750 are children. Annually, about 14,000 adults and children die from cancer, and these figures could rise by 25% annually. While Sri Lanka provides free cancer care, the Apexha Hospital in Maharagama is currently the only specialized pediatric cancer hospital in the whole island. It can care for only 150 children and 100 OPD patients at a time. Hence, when 31-year-old Indira Jayasurya died in 2016, leaving behind two children and a devastated family, they decided to change the status quo. Her family founded the Indira Cancer Trust in her memory and have completed over 20 projects. And now, the biggest project of all, Sua Arana, Sri Lanka's first pediatric palliative care center. With us today is the chairperson and trustee of the Indira Cancer Trust, Indira Jayasurya's sister, Dr. Lanka Visanayake. Welcome Lanka. I know it has been a traumatic 6 years for your family and you but it has also been a strangely fulfilling one. Under the Indira Cancer Trust is Sua Arana which is your biggest project for the moment and Sri Lanka's first pediatric palliative care center. Briefly tell me how it all started. Um thanks Avitri for the invitation and this was a need that was seen by us uh, after consultation with many stakeholders. So palliative care is a new specialty and it's end of life care and it begins at the time of diagnosis and we are able to provide 32 on suite rooms for the children with cancer and their families uh, when they need it most so the children from far away also can come and stay there a lot of other facilities are there all given free of charge and we provide an atmosphere it's called a place of healing so a lot more than just a room So you've already completed 20 projects under the Indira Cancer Trust. How did you prioritize these projects? We continue to work on these 20 projects. These were actually identified through trial and error, through the needs we got. We also analyzed what was out there. We didn't want to duplicate and replicate that what was there. So we provide services starting from medicines, investigations, livelihood support, children's scholarship scheme, and also we uh, have set up the first helpline for 
cancer in Sri Lanka and we get a lot of requests from that. So besides all the trauma of the diagnosis, etc., what was the biggest challenge your family faced when your sister was diagnosed? Um, the first feeling you get, I think, is not only for us, for those as well, cancer is seen as a deadly disease. Uh, but then when we realized the medical treatment there was very good, she got all the treatment on time um, and she went on to have a normal life. So uh, the initial shock, shock actually waved off. Uh, after she recovered and again the shock restarted when we found that her cancer had spread uh, when she was pregnant with her second child. Um, I think a uh, family when you experience this there's really no words to uh, tell you how you feel but it's a um, it's a very saddening feeling which kind of you try and um, kind of face uh, with a lot of strength. So the big C continues to be a stigma. People don't want to talk about it, sometimes even face it. What do you urge families to do in that situation to get some support for themselves? The word cancer is seen as such a taboo uh, subject and we keep telling them that's why we say it's just another disease. It doesn't mean that you are going to die. I think it's a message of hope. Uh, from the Indira Cancer Trust, like what I told you, we, have pro we are providing services for anyone who is diagnosed with cancer, whatever their needs. And then we give them the support and the courage, courage to face it because it's a period of your life where you have, have to go through treatment. And it's essential that you go through treatment because earlier you detect it, the earlier you get the treatment, the better is your survival and getting back to a normal life. So what more can people like us do to get Suarana off the ground? I think Suarana is an amazing project. I think there are so many opportunities to support this effort. Uh, we are actively, basically, we started the project last year, February. We uh, had the inaugurating ceremony and we're very happy to say that despite the COVID, despite restrictions, we are on target. Uh, we've completed 50% of, nearly 50% of the uh, construction and also 50% of the fundraising. Uh, and we hope to open the doors next year in February. So we chose a special day as 15th of February because it's International Childhood Cancer Day. And what we can, what I think from Indira Cancer Trust, one of the things is we promote volunteering. That can happen when the uh, Suwaran is set up. But before that, you can contribute in so many ways. It can be funding, it can be materials, it can be many ways which you can get more information from us. But all we urge you to be part of it because it's a historic, project and you get a lot of satisfaction from it as well. So knowing that you are part of this milestone uh, in Sri Lanka. Good luck Lanka to the family and you. It's a long road ahead, but I'm sure you'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. Cancer doesn't discriminate, but today there is hope. What the Indira Cancer Trust brings is a message of hope and we can all be a part of spreading that message around. Now making paper means cutting trees. Seeing how many unused pages go to waste in exercise books, it is a crying shame to realize that many trees might still be standing if we used our paper a bit better. On Life in 60 Today, we featured three young mothers who decided to change that status quo. Safe Pages to Save Trees is an idea that came alive when I saw my kids' books with unused pages going to waste. I connected with close friends and was amazed by the response from the community. Harsha and Reshma join hands with me as founders and we are full-time mompreneurs who want to make a difference. Simply put, we take unwritten pages and we make new exercise books which are available to any child. Our main objectives are to reduce waste, reuse and upcycle, encourage giving and caring, to increase involvement of the community. We want volunteers to team up with us to help us expand and make this initiative island-wide. Along with that, we need the support to distribute the books and make it available for any child. And we finally would love for corporates to upcycle these books to make it available as a notebook, which could generate income to sustain a long-term initiative truly made in Sri Lanka. Follow us on our Facebook and Instagram handles and let's be planet conscious for future generations. It's time to say goodbye, but we'll be back next week with lots more. Until then, keep our kaleidoscope takeaway in mind.
try to leave the earth a better place than when you arrived.